Let's talk about nucleophiles and electrophiles. The Greek root phil means love. Nucleophiles love positive charge. Electrophiles love negative charge. This is for polar reactions where we have heterolytic processes. So, two electrons from a bond are transferred to one of the atoms, resulting in the more electronegative atom becoming an anion and the less electronegative atom becoming a cation. Induction can lead carbon to be either nucleophilic or electrophilic. In the case of methyl chloride on the left here, the chlorine atom is more electronegative. That withdraws electron density from the carbon, making it electron deficient. That means it has a net positive charge, which makes it electrophilic because opposites attract. In the methyl lithium, carbon is more electronegative than lithium, so the carbon inductively withdraws electron density from the lithium, meaning the carbon is electron rich with a negative charge, making this carbon nucleophilic. Nucleophiles are Lewis bases. This means they contain an electron pair that can be made into a sigma bond. They're also electron rich. In terms of nucleophile strength, the more polarizable the electron cloud, the stronger the nucleophile. Also, more negative charge gives you a stronger nucleophile. And we're just going to use the abbreviation nuke for nucleophile. So, all of these compounds shown down here, the methyl lithium, ethoxide, ethanol, and the 2-butene are nucleophiles. The lone pairs on ethoxide are capable of forming bonds, as are the lone pairs on ethanol. Ethoxide is a stronger nucleophile than ethanol because it has a negative charge. The pi bond is a pair of electrons capable of becoming a sigma bond. All of these are nucleophilic. It should also be noted, thiols are stronger nucleophiles than alcohols. In fact, anything with sulfur is a stronger nucleophile than anything with oxygen. This is because sulfur is more polarizable than oxygen because it has a larger electron cloud. So, a thiolate, like ethane thiolate, is a stronger nucleophile than ethoxide or than ethanol. And Because sulfur is so much more polarizable than oxygen, a thiol is a better nucleophile than ethoxide. Go ahead and answer this clicker question. Pause your video for a second. Do you have the answer? The weakest nucleophile will be the least polarizable. In this case, the smallest of these anions. Fluoride. Check out this link if you have time. It explains nucleophilicity really well. Electrophiles are electron deficient 
they have either a full unit of positive charge or partial positive charge. They're Lewis acids, which means they are capable of receiving a sigma bond. So don't be looking for lone pairs on the electrophile. Carbocations and any partially positive atom are electrophilic. For instance, here, the alpha carbon has a partial positive charge due to inductive effects from chlorine. Table 6.3 gives you some common nucleophilic centers. Go ahead and draw a picture of this molecule, and then label all the sites that are either nucleophilic or electrophilic. And it might help to draw in any lone pairs beforehand. Pause your video now and do the work. Then you can unpause it and see the answer. The lone pairs are not now drawn in. Let's start with nucleophilic sites. Any lone pair that's capable of becoming a sigma bond is nucleophilic, as is any pi bond. So the hydroxyl group is nucleophilic, as is the carbonyl oxygen as is the lone pair on nitrogen, as is the carbon-carbon pi bond, as is the alkoxide. What about the lone pair on the oxyanion? I'm sorry, the oxonium ion? Well, if you turned it into a sigma bond, that would be oxygen with four bonds. We never see that. Therefore, this is not nucleophilic. Now let's look at electrophilic sites. These are places with partial positive charge or full positive charge where you're bound to a more electronegative atom. Did you get the same answers?